Good afternoon, Dell fans, and welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. It is day three of Dell Tech World. I'm feeling super smart, thanks to all the wonderful guests we've had on the show this week. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, John Furrier. John, how are you feeling this morning? Feel feeling great. inspired? I feel I'm totally inspired by the hardware revolution. It's a renaissance in systems engineering. It's a renaissance in application transformation. And, and the clustered systems, the data center is back, and it's, but it's not, the old data center, it's the new data center, it's the AI data center, so the AI factory, which you know I love, fan of the, the Dell's positioning. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about right it here. We're, yeah, we're going to talk about it this segment, how to build a modern, sustainable data center. And, and do it thinking about efficiency and, yes. and sustainability, which is super awesome. And in this moment, let me welcome two super alums to theCUBE. <laughs> Brian Payne of Group Shop Routes, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for we having us. We had such a fun chat yesterday. I love Absolutely. that you're back on for day yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. We're back for a second dose. <laughs> yeah. You brought the energy yesterday, so I know you'd bring. Brian, you're an OG, 12, 12 years of showing up on theCUBE. Yeah, that's right, that's right. That is I love amazing. It. You haven't gotten <laughs> yeah. sick of us yet. I'm not, super not grateful. A bit. Not a bit. Our AI is going to speak, speak Brian Payne soon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> 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 you got, you got all your linguistics. Thank you for interest. training all of our models. I don't even have to show up next time. It'll just be a hologram. <laughs> it's a large language model. <laughs> I love it. Brian, since I didn't have you on yesterday, how's the show been for you so far? It's been great. I tell you what, the uh, amount of focus on innovation around AI has just been mind-blowing and staggering, and our customers have been yeah. super excited about it. And of course, to some degree, I think, feeling a little bit paranoid, like we got to get moving. I mean, the, the call to action has been clear and it's been exciting. Yeah. I think that I think that's actually a, a really good point. I've been, you get to talk to a lot of different customers. What is that energy? We've heard the words overwhelmed, there's kind of a FOMO, I don't want to get left behind. What are you hearing, Prun? It's definitely very top of mind, like uh, in a way that yeah. it hasn't been, I mean, it hasn't been building towards it, but I think with AI, it's just taken a step change in function in terms of the urgency of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, you know, you saw on, on stage Arthur Lewis, he announced some of the racks that we were, were going to be uh, making available to customers. 70 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts, 130 kilowatts. Yeah. These are very, very energy dense and energy hungry devices. So they are, are, are uh, so that's definitely top of mind for customers as well. And, and what, we're, what we're talking to them about is you've got to think from the bottoms up, right? Yeah. You've got to think about how you're you know, if you're building a new data center, which we think a lot of people will, like Jensen talked about, yeah. uh, you know, building AI factories, whether you're retrofitting your existing data center, you've got to think through the entire stack. What's the, what's the position that your hardware vendor is taking on? How these are built? How these are designed? What's the software layer in terms of being able to manage these? What are the services and professional services capabilities that you're getting to be able to actually think about this from the ground up? And I think that's a place where we feel like we have capabilities in all of those three areas. Guys, I want to get your perspective, because we've had many conversations on theCUBE, and as we've been getting close to this new world we're going to be moving into quickly, the world's changed, and I want to get your thoughts. I mean, building a motherboard, building a server, putting a rack and stack in a data center, it's changed. Now the, the data center of the future is going to look a lot different. You can't just put a bunch of GPUs on the rack, you're going to have power problems. Right. So constraints change, but the game is still the same. Yeah. You're building a system. Right, so the, yeah. op the operating system is the data center, yeah, right. and I think GTC, Jensen pointed that out, this is what we think it looks like. It's got leaves, it's got spines, it's got clustered systems. Supercomputer, Super if you computer will. Supercomputer, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. it's now a new system. So yeah. server, data center, all kind of blending in my mind. Okay, yeah. that's rants over. But what does it mean <laughs> from a constraint standpoint? Because sustainability is about energy. Yep. How do you manage that? How do you design that? Take us through your vision of how, to, how that plays in, because it's not as easy as just the old way, stack, rack, and stack. How do you, what are the constraints and how do you design it around them or manage them? Yeah, so, so we, I mean, just building what Varun said, we, we have a sustainable data center strategy and our customers are engaging us saying, what do we do? How, how, can you, how can you help us? And so to your point, we've got to think about, all right, how do we cope with 8x growth in power over the next six years, all driven by Gen AI infrastructure? Well, the good news is, is that we have a legacy of designing systems for pushing the envelope. If you think back to the advent of the hyperscale, you know, public cloud, we were very much involved in building out the, those data centers, which were pushing the envelope at that point in time. So we've got a legacy of expertise around how do we design at a rack level, how do we make sure that the design within the system is as efficient as possible so that we can think about optimizing the, the power to cool the entire rack, the entire data center 
liquid cooling innovation that we're bringing in that's absolutely yeah. necessary because at the end of the day, what's good for sustainability is also good for business because it's going to help people, A, cope with the, the challenges of taking advantage of this infrastructure and then running it in an efficient way that is cost effective. We don't always have that intersection. No. But it's good, and and no. It's, it's refreshing. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think the economics of, of power constraints or power constraints, the realities of power constraints, the reality of economic considerations, they're going to drive a natural selection process here for customers. Uh, and you know, it's not just the, the power efficiency that, that Brian is talking about. Other, other angles that people ask us questions around from sustainability is, what's the use of recyclable materials? What is the circular, what are you doing for circular economy? Energy efficiency is a big economic consideration, but, but also, as, as, as you all know, uh, ESG uh, requirements, regulatory compliance around, uh, compliance around the circular economy, what percentage of recyclable materials are using. Before any of this AI stuff even kicked off, Dell was a leader in that space, yeah. right? So we feel like across the dimension of energy efficiency and the recyclable economy, we have, uh, circular economy I should say, we have a great story across the board from not just the design of the individual components and the servers and the storage, but putting it all together in a rack scale solution yeah. for customers. You guys have been a leader in that from day one, even from boxes originally started that way and then, yep. and then changed all the material management kicks in. Yes. What, a lot of people might not know how much you guys do in, in Dell, especially around software. I mean, this has been tooling out there from desktop days yeah, and servers. Yeah, yeah. How much is software involved? Because software plays a key role in managing yep. the system. It, Obviously power, Ethernet, we love the, how Ethernet the going. Absolutely. But outside of that, what, what software, yeah. how much software is built in here? What's going on in Dell? Yeah, sure, it's, so curtain. it's a critical, I, I mean, so, we can design our products with sustainable materials, make them energy efficient, but if you don't make the operation, uh, give customers the tools to optimize the operation, you're failing, right? And so we, we have kind of a stacked approach. So down at the system level, we have telemetry built into our system where we're monitoring, constantly monitoring how the system's performing, how the workload is optimized, and then you know, controlling cooling within the server. We have uh, a tool called Open Manage Enterprise that gives customers the ability to manage their fleet of servers, set power constraints and, and, uh, and limits on how do they get the most uh, you know, operational efficiency, identify zombie servers, things like that. And then we pull it up and we just have released our uh, Apex AI Ops observability capabilities where now we can apply AI to help customers set policies and automate the operation of their data center so that they can manage the most efficient and most effective way. Uh, so, you, so like the security conversation where there's AI for security and security for AI, you guys have yeah. AI yeah. for Dell and Dell for AI. So take yeah. us, share that, the difference between how you're, how you're using AI internally or see that playing out to make you more efficient and then so how the customer has it on there. I think, I think AI for energy efficiency is a fascinating frontier, right? Uh, uh, if you look at what we've announced, one of the things we announced was Apex AI Ops, right? We talked about it yesterday here. And one of the capabilities that we see ourselves, we, we are investing more and more in that is as you start to use AI to actually drive the insights that are being fed to the IT operators, right? Yeah. Um, energy efficiency is a space that is ripe for uh, AI-driven insights, right? Brian talked about it at the component level, at the server level, monitoring uh, what's happening with power management, power consumption, zombie servers. As we start to, you know, John, you were mentioning, as we start to think about this at a system level design, yeah. and you start to think about it at rack scale across the data center, the individual component capabilities are not as, imp are, are important, but they're more not as important as the thinking about it as a system, right? Yeah. Where, do you, where do you reduce power consumption? Where do you increase power consumption? Where do you think you're going to need more mm -hmm. capabilities from a cooling perspective, et cetera? That has to be done at a system level, and AI is going to help reduce that complexity yeah. for our customers and give them those insights in a kind of a chatbot LLM interface so that they can take action on it relatively quickly. It's, it's holistic health of their data system. Syst as a yeah. system, right, as a whole system, not yeah. just as a server or a storage. And yeah. we can even take it proactively where we can actually forecast what is the product carbon footprint of your data center expected to be by looking yes. at those historical yes. trends, yes. So, which are important tools That's as awesome. people are trying to tackle sustainability. Yeah, and also, also you have the ability too to do they use agents are coming online too. How do you guys see the world of agents? Because chatbots will turn into agents, yeah. where agents are actually doing the work. Where do you guys see that intersection? Because it's been a big conversation. It's, no, actually, I don't think it's really a right answer, but it depends on the workflow. I'm just curious, where is the innovation going to be automated if I have agents 
working on my behalf, I'm a customer, I, it, or is yeah, that not? It's, it's, it's going to be interesting. I don't know that we any of us knows where that's going to go. We're kind of very much at the, the early stage of that, but if you take the example I was just sharing around AI ops, today what we offer uh, is information for uh, IT operators and, and app yeah. operators to be able to take action. To your point, John, uh, you know, maybe what, what, what the next frontier is, like instead of the, uh, the human having to take action, you can automate that so an agent for that's servicing the insights is talking to an agent that's actually taking the action. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I think I, I certainly yeah. think we're going to start to see that happening more and more. Yeah. Discrete agents talking to each other to actually drive automation. Yeah. I, I think I think it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I think you're right. You have some examples of success in this recently. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you talk to me about something that happened at, on the farm? Oh, sure, I can, I can do Nature Fresh. Yeah. We have, other, uh, you know, we have, we have uh, a really strong partnership with uh, uh, an organization called Nature Fresh Farms. They're here on the, on the booth and they, are, they're, oh, cool. they do, uh, you know, they really are leaders in applying technology for farming and, and food produce. And they, we've had a long standing partnership many, many years with them in terms of helping them on so many factors that we've been talking about. One is how to be more energy efficient. How to actually get insights to drive more produce per, per acre, which then helps you know, create more food, uh, more sustain, and then also help them reduce their, their for example, environmental, uh, make their environmental footprint more sustainable. We've helped them reduce their, their water usage by over 90% over the time they've been working with them, right? So we, 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 yeah. know, we love to talk about servers yeah. and how much power they're consuming. <laughs> There's a whole other world out there in terms of you know, how, like, water usage, et cetera, that we can help our customers with. I think our partnership with Nature Fresh Farms has been an amazing example of that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, Brian, maybe you can talk yeah. about you know, large scale deployments as well. Yeah, so, so as you think about you know, our industry, Dell, one of the big things is bringing together a technology ecosystem. And you think about the challenges with generative AI and the power that's required to power large farms of GPU as a service there's important things to tackle in terms of the energy grid. So uh, we've got uh, one of our new partners here, customer, Iron, who is actually developing our data centers that are hosting massive uh, amounts of XE9680s clustered together, all powered by renewable energy, either water-driven or air-driven. They're air-cooled designs. Yeah. That's it, awesome. So, so they chose, because they want to optimize uh, water usage, they've chosen the air-cooled designs, and what they found is, with our products, they can operate their temperature of their data center at a higher level than they could with, with other, other designs out there, which again, lower the overall operating cost of their environment. So just as, as we think about like, you know, customers who are looking and, and struggling with, hey, how am I going to get started up with uh, providing generative AI capabilities within my company? Building out the infrastructure is a challenge. That's where this partner ecosystem comes into play. We can partner them up with someone who's doing it in an incredibly sustainable way and get them on the way to solving problems. You know, uh, we talked about this yesterday, Arthur talked about it on stage. The new liquid cool system that's going to house 72 GPUs in, in one rack that Jensen was so excited about when, when we were talking <laughs> to Michael. Um, yeah. It was, it, it, it is, it is liquid cool, direct to liquid, uh, direct to chip liquid cooling. We think it's going to be 2.5 times more energy efficient than, than what we had in previous generations. So yes, these are large, uh, large stamps in terms of power consumption, but the energy efficiency per operation is better than ever before, right? So the amount of uh, processing they're able to drive per watt is, we're, we're looking to move that further and further away and, and be more efficient there. Yeah, and these clusters are getting bigger and bigger, consuming more power, the cooling's critical. Um, the the on-prem dynamic is also interesting. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts on this because yeah. you saw this a, a lot in the HPC work, workloads. HPC workloads, as we covered with you guys at your innovation center uh, last year, they were old use cases, all the big, the, the build a wing at Boeing and all kinds of like biology, high-end stuff, like not common yeah. use cases. So that's, that's coming down, the democratization of HPC is happening. I mean, right. you're starting to see workloads being scoped known workloads, a bank application for instance, might not be an HPC workload, but you inject Gen AI into it, that's now an end-to-end -end workload from the device to the back end. John, you so would, you yeah. can scope that. Before we started, you and we were talking about Supercompute, the yeah. you know, amazing event that's traditionally been an HPC event, and we're seeing mm -hmm. basically the lines between HPC and AI yeah. being blurred right now. Yeah. Supercompute and other such events are now as much AI events as they are HPC events. Yeah. Totally uh, agree, and, it is and, you know, interesting. It'll, it'll be very interesting to see how uh, some of these traditional HPC deployments kind of evolve based on the innovation that's happening in you know, what, what we would call AI workloads that may be discrete from HPC. We definitely think there's going to be a lot of 
a lot of interplay, and of course, a lot of the work that's happening with AI is built on the shoulders of yeah. the innovation that's been happening in HPC for such a long time. And yeah. healthcare, we just had a healthcare medicine on from Northwestern. Their specific direct quote here on theCUBE, our data's on-prem. We want the AI yeah. factory here. Yeah. 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 And they've already made advances with your innovation lab, HPC yeah. innovation lab. Yeah. And again, that points to, 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 to what I'm seeing, and we'll love to get your reaction. As an end-to-end -end workload that was traditionally managed by IT, has now new requirements for Gen AI, which are, you know, it's complicated yeah. because it's generative, right? Yeah. It's a different category, as Jensen points out. That now can be scoped. I can now deploy GPUs in a trusted environment yes. and say, yes. that's scoped, yes. and it's no over-provisioning, it's basically in design. Yeah. It, that's, uh, that's a use case that I don't need the cloud for. I can say I can host it at a, at a colo facility, I could locate it in the hospital itself. I mean, so, yeah, oh sorry, I was yeah. going to say, one, one of the, as we, as we think about the democratization of the technology, bringing it closer to the, and needing to get it closer to the mm -hmm. data, you quickly run into a challenge of how do I deploy that? How do I retrofit my data center to support that? That's one area where customers are looking to us for help, and we've developed services to help them with, hey, what is a sustainable data center plan? How do I get a multi-year plan to meet the needs of my business, respond to data gravity, and do it in a sustainable way? And so, engaging customers on both on the generative AI front of like, hey, how do I develop applications to solve those problems, and then how do I get the infrastructure that can you well, know, help and, them? And, and again, it's not, not, not to make it sound like it's true, because it's not, I mean, having a data modernization service that you guys have, yeah. a modern data center, sustainable data center service, it's great, sounds sexy, top line, great. But there's a lot of blocking and tackling got it going on. You got yeah, yeah. asset management, yeah. waste recovery. Yes. So the, what, what are the, those details? Yeah. Those are heavy duty stuff. You know, we, we take a step back. We talked about the AI factory, right? Like you were talking about AI factory, it, it follows the data. Yeah. AI factories will have, we believe AI factories will be everywhere. They'll be in data centers, they'll be at the edge, they'll be in, in, uh, on, on users' desktops, right? Yeah. Services is a huge part of that, that conversation and we're, we're being asked because of all this, uh, the, the experience we've had with AI, even before Gen AI was a thing, thousands of customers, yeah. we have, we think uh, we've got a lot of unique IP that we can help customers with from a process perspective. So, asset recovery services, right? If you think about, mm -hmm. hey, how do you responsibly recycle your e-waste, make sure that that helps you with the recyclable, you know, the circular economy. Um, data center and modernization services, we, we started this conversation talking about you've got to think from the ground up in terms of how you've got to retrofit your data centers or build them from scratch. We have a lot of experience we can help customers with and they're looking to us for that. And then even things like you know um, advisory services for uh, building sustainable data centers, yeah. right? All of those capabilities I, we think are an important part of the um, the help we can provide customers and, and help them, help us be a trusted advisor to them on, on all of these initiatives. This is one of those cases where you become what you're known for. You've done it for yourself. Yeah. It's not something that says, hey, let's start a service and yeah. start servicing yeah. people. Well, you, you got the capabilities, why not bring it out to the customers? Well, I mean, just, customers need that help yeah. from us. Yeah, yeah that's a yeah. great, that's a great win. In and fact, our own, I'm sorry, our own Dell Digital team used that service to plan yeah. our generative AI <laughs> capability. I mean, I was, I was kind of going to ask that, and I, I would, has the demand for sustainable data centers gone up since we've seen this AI revolution like crazy? Yeah. I, guess I can imagine it wasn't necessarily as popular of a conversation. I think it has been, it has been building yeah. for, for a while, right? I mean, everything that's been happening in the, in the, in the industry, even before AI, yeah. uh, you know, ESG initiatives, sustainable data centers, et cetera, were really driving a lot of those conversations. We certainly think there is a lot more urgency to it, because now it's a, it's a roadblock to, if yeah. you don't solve it, that's it's a bottleneck to getting your yeah. AI effort. So Much you're right, yeah. more front of mind in the sense of yeah. like, ooh, we got to do this right and, now, and or it's else easier to mention. it's easier to measure the spot. ROI easier to uh, measure the, the impact of the business if you don't get those things figured out now. Well, I think AI is an obvious, jumps off the page from a cost perspective yeah. and from a quote, sustainable, it yes. blows all the metrics out of the water. Wait a minute, what? all this horsepower, this compute, power's being used. Yeah. And yeah. open AI, they, yeah. they, they're case in point, they've been a big poster child. Yeah. It costs a lot to run these generative AI workloads from terms yeah. of a power standpoint. Yeah. 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 So, it's, so it, it jumps off the page, hey, we're looking, doing great, boom. Well, so it's like, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, gotta, yeah, exactly. you got to address it. Yeah. yeah, and like we were talking about earlier, with, with this faster development cycle, machines being able to be made faster, two to three years, traditional cycle now nine months, people craving AI computers, you guys announcing them, which is very exciting, there's going to be a lot more e-waste. Yeah. In theory, depending. And I love that you guys have, you have your Concept Luna project, which yeah. is really cool. 
I, I don't know if you know about this, John, but I, I, when I was doing my research for you guys, I thought this was so interesting. It reduces the disassembly time, which is not something I thought about in terms of sustainability, yeah. Yeah. from an hour yeah. down to That's minutes. That's not obvious. Which is, no, which is super unique when thinking about this, coming back to this holistic yeah. ecosystem, yeah. Yeah. health. Yeah. What a thoughtful thing to be thinking about. And there are 57 million tons of e-waste around the world yes. every year. Yeah. Yeah. That's every year. E-waste, yeah. who thinks about that? That's, yeah. well, you guys do, I don't know. They do, that's <laughs> what I mean, this is about the sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it really is, uh, 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 to your point, it's only going to get more, more magnified. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, th I think in order to address these really systemic challenges, yeah. we take an end-to-end -end approach uh, as a company, and so it's literally Very clear. ingrained in the, how we think about engaging with the supply chain, how do we think about the design of our products, to your point about disassembly time, and then on the back end, how Modularity do we do recycling, too. repurposing, and, and, it just, and, and it's just built into the way we operate, yeah. and I think that enables us to be successful, but we still have big challenges ahead to get to our stated goals for 2030. I know it's ambitious goals yeah. you've laid out. It's very impressive. But Dell's been putting out an ESG report since 1998, yeah. which is pretty early, especially for large companies. Yeah. So yeah. It's, I, I am not surprised. All right, so we we let Varun do something special yesterday, and I want to let you have your <laughs> shot. <laughs> Ryan, since we're talking about a sustainable world, it's all about not just what we do in our day jobs, but also making the planet better for yeah. our friends and our families and our, and our lives. So anyone you'd like to say hello to? Uh, I think I should say hello to my wife, Julie, <laughs> and to my two kids that we're trying to make a more sustainable world for, Charlotte and Claire. Awesome. <laughs> Brian's doing a good job. I, I got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's so working. What's the conversation like with the fam around the dinner table about AI? You know, it's Talk interesting. About it? Yeah, so we, we, we our kids are different ages, so uh, we'll have different perspectives. I have a 19-year-old, a freshman in college, and she's just chomping at the bit to learn everything she can, figure out how to code and how to how to apply it. My 17-year-old is is also looking into it, figuring out how it's going to do her homework. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a, lucky. Cheeky assistant. <laughs> the, it's a cheeky. The reasoning is really good in the math <laughs> equations too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's AI is our little cheeky assistant. Brian, Rune, this has been a really great thank session. You, thank this you, we thank we you went much. longer than expected. We're actually over time because you're also interesting. So thank <laughs> yeah, you for thank bringing you. this very thank important you. Thank you for conversation. Us, yeah. It's been fantastic both times too. We're, we're awesome. really getting to hang out this week. I love it. Thank and John, us. thank you for your fabulous insights thank and you. candor thank, as thank always. Thank you. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic days. Three days of live coverage here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Dell Tech World. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.